it looks like I'm live. Let me just double check on my little app, not my app, but on my phone here just to make sure everything is fine. You might hear some feedback in the background. I see a screen on my other screen. Is there an unmute on this? There we go. I'll be hearing myself. You'll be hearing myself. And indeed I am, so nobody's watching obviously right now. I wonder if there's a way I can share this with everybody. Where is the damn thing? <coughs> Do stop use your encoder. Well, I'm going to be sitting here right now as you can see i'm going to be unboxing this air fryer that i just lit got literally like maybe half an hour ago through the mail via amazon first i'm going to make sure the camera's fine and everything's here i mean let's see this i mean the stream here on my tablet is about maybe 30 or so seconds behind so i won't see myself in a second up oh, here i am and looks like i'm out of shot a little bit how do I deal with that? Okay. Let's see. That ought to do, I think. I think that'll do just fine. Oh, there's one person watching, and if you're watching, I apologize for the crap quality here. So, let's see. Does it just want to make, give people, more people some time to come by and watch me unbox this air fryer, which I bought from Amazon a couple of days ago. So where is everything here? Administrative crap. What am I doing? What am I doing? Go live button. Optional features add stream info. I've already set up the encoding software on the phone. I didn't even bother to check if this sent all my stuff to my Twitters and my Facebooks. <laughs> Refresh that. How do you send the stupid streaming live link? On this dumb thing. Aha, uh -huh. here's the link. Copy. And now to paste it on all my social mediars. Live now. Three exclamation marks. Paste. Tweet. And now for the Facebooks. For older folks like myself. Now where is my page? Oh wait, I want the pages manager, you idiot. Here we are. Manager. Now, last time I did a live video like this, I thought I did not save it and that it was lost forever, but turns out that was not the case. But anywho, let's just see. Post onto the Facebooks. I said, placed it. Post it, publish it now. Now, 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 now. Come on, hurry up. Here we go. So I posted stuff on social media, so now I'm going to give it maybe five more minutes to let folks come in. Probably all two or three of them. Bob the Raptor is in here. Oh, new toy. Am I glad to see you? Well, good to hear from you. But anywho, let's see where's my thing there. 
And yes, indeed, I do have a new toy. This thing here, Go As USA Airwise Fryer, the air fryer. Something that I've been curious about for a long, long time, just mainly because I actually have a regular deep fryer, but I hate cleaning it. I don't like, wa plus I don't like wasting oil and it's, it's just a pain to clean. Plus, I mean, I could also deep fry stuff using a pot or a wok, both of which I have, but those are also a pain to clean and disposing of the oil is also pretty difficult. But from reading up on this thing, it's pretty much an over-glorified uh, convection oven, but because it's such a, excuse me, because it's such a small size compared to my regular oven, it's, it's ideal. Now, when I was looking at these, I was thinking more about getting the bigger model, the 5.8 or thereabouts uh, model of these types of fryers, but <clears throat> one, they were, they were a little bit on the pricey side, and then I realized that's mainly for a family of four or six, and I'm only cooking for one, maybe two sometimes, but so I decided to get this. And as you can see, the box is a little bit beaten up. That's by design. I did order the used one on Amazon to save a little bit of money. They just said the packaging would be damaged. I've done stuff like that on Amazon before. So just to save a little bit of money. I've never really had any big problems ordering stuff that way. If it's just cosmetic imperfections, if it still works, it works. So let's see any more people who joined. Uh, yeah, well... So you fry without oil, what dark sorcery is that, asked Bob. It, from how I understand it, like I said, it's just a uh, tiny, tiny convection oven where it's, it's sort of like an oven, but it just blows hot air all around. So there's, it's constantly surrounded by hot air, so it cooks a lot faster. Again, that's how normal convection ovens work in, the, uh, in your regular oven. But this takes up a lot less space, and I'm guessing... Um, you can, well, let me just take a look here on the side here. See the rapid air circulation, it's like that. A removable pan, ooh, that could be nice and interesting. I mean, you can use oil if you want to. I've seen some recipes where they just splash a little bit of oil on the outside just to crisp it up a little bit. That's, it's frying without oil. Just, I mean, it, the concept of air fryer is not a new concept, I think. The original KFC was based on an air fryer. Uh, so at least that was Colonel, so what Colonel Sanders did way, way back in the day. And, hey, Chris is here. Hey, Rhino, I see your folks tailgating right now. Yep. My folks are in Columbus right now tailgating for the Ohio State Tulane game. And, no, I did not join them, but I'll have fun. But I got my own toy to play with, too, so. Can you use that fryer at a tailgate? Well, I th don't think so. This requires electricity. Well, I, I'll take, sort of take that back. I mean, if you've got a, a plug-in source for something like that, obviously you could. I mean, I got a trans, what is it, a transformer, a rectifier, something that you could hook up to a car battery, but if you've got enough tech toys, you probably could take it at a tailgate, but this model probably not, because this model is only intended for cooking to cook for one or two. You'd need the giant model for four or six people, and for a big, big tailgate, not, not even close, just... Get a big ass pot, put a lot of oil in it, and just fry it normally. But anyway, you're not here for that. As I said before, the package is a little bit damaged, but that was by design because I ordered it used off of Amazon. It said beforehand that the package would be damaged. But if that's the worst, then that's fine with me. Plus, I've ordered semi used package damaged stuff from Amazon before and I've never had any problems, so. Anyway, let's get to the unboxing. I don't have a knife on me, so let me get <clears throat> behind the camera for a sec. Yep, I'm going to be using a steak knife to open this. Let's see. Let me go back. Let's see if everything's in shot. Well, my head's probably not in shot, but oh, who cares? You don't want to see my ugly mug anyway. Let's <laughs> Tape of this part. 
No shocking her. Or maybe we can just rip it. No, that's probably not a good idea. See if this is in semi used condition, which is what I expect. It would help if I undid this thing too. And I need to use my knife for that too. And hope I don't cut my hand doing this. begins. Start with this. 50 recipes for the air fryer plus minimal instructions, warranties, and other junk that I'm not going to read. Steak knife is the universal package opener. Everybody knows that. Let's see. Recipe book. Instruction manual, and what is this? Quick reference guide. Should probably take this somewhere. And now, oh, here comes the big thing. Probably gonna need more table space. And hope I don't drop this and ruin it. There we go. see on the outside doesn't look too bad some plasticky stuff and I have to get rid of that mm, where's, it, where's more I see here is this plasticky protecty stuff it has to be yeah here we are here we are, here we are. let's pull this off if I can yeah. alright reference guide to see if I can well let's look at the manual anyway it doesn't look too bad let me just see if we can get a close-up of what the main panel looks like turn this light off looks like I'm on a tripod let's take that off what do we have here? It's not, it's not focusing, right? No, nope, it's not focusing. But anyway, I will tell you this. This is warm chips, chicken, steak, shrimp, pork, cake for some reason. I'm guessing you can bake stuff in this too if you want to and fish, setting for time, setting for temperature, and power button. I'm guessing these are presets for what you can do with it. But now, let's see, how do I open this thing? Do you have anything you can demo in today's video fries? I don't have, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. I may have spoke too soon. I do have some frozen popcorn chicken in the freezer right now which would be nice, but let's see if I can figure out how to open this thing by reading the manual. First, let me get back to position. Play light back on. So now this needs a name. Both Chris and Bob suggested that. 
first. I want to figure out how this works. This GoWise USA Fryer complies with all standards regarding electromagnetic fields. I don't know if I should be concerned about that, but eh. Before first use, remove all packaging material, stickers, and labels. Clean the basket and pan with hot water, soap, and a non-abrasive sponge. Wipe inside and outside of appliance with a clean cloth. There is no need to fill pan with oil and frying fat because the appliance works with hot air. And then, let's read some of this other stuff. And again, in capital letters, do not fill the pan with oil or any other liquid. No wonder the pan won't come out. It's taped to the unit. Imagine that. Let's see, is there one on the other side? Yes, there is, on the other side. Let's see. Is there any other stickers or chicanery attached to this? <coughs> like you got this thing here with the holes and such in it I'm gonna guess oh, oh yep that was almost a disaster but here's the pan looks like a normal pan and oh good thing I didn't play with it right now there's a cardboard thing I'm gonna jigger in that goodbye there's the bottom part of the pan here's this Now, I'm tempting myself to go to the store, get some chicken wings, bread them up, and fry them. They make some breaded wings. And I like the ones that I made in a regular fryer before, but hmm, might be a good dinner. I might make a separate video about that, but that'll be later. This is strictly the unboxing, and now let's see what else in here. Uh, but ooh. I just saw looking under here, there is a heating element right here above the basket where it's supposed to be. Yep, heating element and right above it is a fan. And that is how this air fryer works. <clears throat> heating element heats up the air, fan above it, blows the air around it. Because, and it works like that because when you cook it in a normal oven, yeah, the air around it gets really, really hot, but the air closest to the food is a little bit colder than the rest of the air around it, which makes sense because you're putting something cold in the oven. Air around the cooked food is going to be slightly colder, but when you have the fan, it blows hot air all around it, so it cooks up quicker. Chicken cutlets. Christopher, I can hear you salivating through the internet. And if I wasn't on camera, I'd be joining you. But anyway, uh, let's see, is there anything else here? No, I don't really think there's much here. Nope. This little doodad on the back is the vent. For, I'm guessing for when the hot air or the vapor comes out. And well, I can't remove it and I don't know if I would want to anyway. But yeah. This is it, the air fryer unboxing. I'm getting another idea for something I could potentially cook in here. I do have a spiralizer that I could, maybe not French fry, but I'm thinking maybe shoestring potatoes I could make in this. Take my spiralizer, take a potato, make really, really fine, really, really fine potato strands and just Fry them up in here. That could be. That sounds like a good idea. That sounds like a really good idea. Uh, so some popcorn chicken in for our entertainment, Chris. Uh, what? I did, it does say I gotta clean stuff from the inside, but eh, how long can that take? And lastly, important question: Are you a Frank's or a Cholula's kind of guy? Well, I 
I don't think I've ever bought a bottle of Cholula's. I've mostly bought Franks, but um, recently, I, because I'm cheap, I buy uh, the Louisiana stuff. Because it's, I mean, it's like a dollar cheaper, and it, it, it does have a slightly different recipe, but it gets the job done. I will tell you this, though. Tabasco brand is bleh. It's like tasting liquid metal. And not in a good way, but and it's, how it can it ever be in a good way? But you know what? Chris, at your insistence, I'm going to take what's left of my uh, frozen popcorn chicken and pop it in here. So, let's move over to the kitchen. First, let's... Da, 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 da. My kitchen is a disaster. Is no, it's not a disaster, but it's just toss that junk. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Hmm. Might need this for later. Slate, take the blender, put it away. Put that away. Off camera. And now. There we go. Let's unravel this. There's a cord. Let's twist tie around the power cord. So I will not plug it in until I give this a good rinsing. Grab my tablet so I can read all of your glorious comments. It's a Purdue popcorn chicken and uh, rinse out the pan. I'm not too concerned about drying it because it's gonna evaporate all the way. Wipe it with a nail cloth. with a little paper towel. I reckon that'll do. So, what to do next? I'll take some of this popcorn chicken into yonder pot. I'll take a lot of it. So there's not a whole lot left, just enough for one meal, so. Pretty yep. good uh, late lunch. And Michelle Nesla, I've just tuned in, not sure what you are doing, but I'm impressed. I am unboxing my brand newly purchased air fryer. I talked about online on my personal channels for about getting these for a while, but anyway. Here we are, the pieces of popcorn chicken in there. They fit in nicely. Now let's plug this bugger in. Uh, turn it on. I said, oh wait, it's probably gonna wait. Ooh, it beeps. 
<clears throat> but you know what? I'm not going to start cooking until I read the directions. That always helps. Here's that. What am I doing? Let's see. You know what? Just to give it a little bit of oilness, I'm going to take some olive oil spray and just spray down this little, this chicken. sure there's some coating of oil on all the sides. That will do. And now... Who labeled the bag Brian? Well, uh, that's not a story I want to tell on video. How do I use this thing? Set your cooking time and temperature by choosing one of the eight presets. <clears throat> but anyway, then I should probably look at the... I'll just set it manually here. <clears throat> Conventional oven. It says to cook it four, to 425. Well, it only goes up to 400, so... The bag says 425. Let's see. Well, actually, you know what? Chicken. I'll do it for 15 minutes. Hot 370. How does that sound? Let's see. You know what? That's good enough for me, and I'll just check it halfway through. And away we go. Can't you just tell the excitement? Now let's just hope that this thing doesn't catch fire. expect to cook stuff here so we're going to be staring at this for 15 minutes like watching paint dry like watching somebody just breathe for 15 minutes in the meantime what should we do As of now, it seems pretty quiet. I mean, I expected it to make noise. I heard folks say that it does make a noise, but... Which is not surprising because it is a convection oven, after all. See the vent? Yep, the vent in the back does feel hot, obviously. And for those of you who just joined in, again, this is a air fryer but it's properly a convection oven when I looked under this basket here I did see a heating element much like your old-school um, stovetop and there's a fan directly above the heating element to blow the hot air all around and again there's several different settings here just warm chips chicken steak shrimp pork fish and cake. Apparently you can cook a cake in this, or cupcakes or whatever. Why? Well, it is an oven, so don't see why you wouldn't, but it's 
bizarre. And oh, Nick has come in. Oh boy, too new at the right time. Yes, indeed. Beer review in the meantime? Well, I do not have any beer with me. I do have something, though. Yes, mason jars. Maybe not a beer review, but a liquor liqueur review. When I went to Tennessee last month, I went to one of my favorite places, the Sugarlands uh, Distillery, which is right on a strip in Gatlinburg. And I got a few jars of shine, or quote unquote legal moonshine, which is, I mean, it's probably just flavored junk nowadays, but let me get a a little shot glass and I will do a little review. <sighs> this new. Let me turn this around to the proper orientation. The bag there. See my wonderful kitchen in all its dirty and unclean glory. So again, yes, I went to Sugarlands last month when I went to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Got three different jars of shine. I've enjoyed these two readily. Just these are flavored liqueur, and that one over there is also flavored, but it's full potency, and 100 proof stuff. But anyway, let's go over what I have here. I'll eeny meeny miny mo. This one first. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna save that one for last. Start with this one, Tickles Dynamite Cinnamon Moonshine. This is sort of like their version of what's it called? Uh, Fireball. Let's see who else is there. Have I been cold smoking anything as of late? I have not. I've been meaning to cold smoke another block of cheddar for a while, but I've never gotten around to it. I, I don't think I've actually smoked anything recently in a while, which is very, very depressing. What? Wait, wait, I, I tell a lie. It was a month or two ago, I did smoke some wings, but that was when my electric smoker in the back of the garage there broke down uh, a little bit. 11 minutes on the uh, air fryer. I can't remember. I'll check it again. It might remind me to check in four minutes, but anyway, the cold smoker broke down. The heating element broke down, but thankfully my dad came by and we bought a new one and replaced it, and it's working fine now. But cold smoking, no. But anyway, back to the liquor review. Again, I'm going to start with the cinnamon moonshine. Let's see if I can open it. Yep. And because I'm using a jar, got this little doodad there. Quick little pour. Just a little splash. So, cheers. That tastes like Red Hots. That tastes like Red Hots. And it tastes a little bit like Fireball too. I, know I don't do liquor that much, but that's the first thing that reminds me of the Red Hots candy. Let's see. So now let's rinse that out. Number two is what's going to be right here. Oh, by the way, this stuff, 40 proof, 20% ABV. This stuff here, 100 proof, 50% ABV. This is their Peppermint Moonshine. It was the only moonshine apart from, it was the only high proof moonshine that was flavored. I think, actually, I tell a lie, I think there's another one that was a little bit more flavored than this, but this appealed to me the most. But I haven't really drank a whole lot of it because I don't, don't want to drink it straight and mix it with something. Well, I could mix it with something. I'm thinking maybe Kahlua or Bailey's to get like a chocolate peppermint kind of thing going. But anyway, a little bit of peppermint moonshine. I've had it in the freezer to keep it super cold. Let's see how this goes.
Not sure if that was enough to really get the full. Oh, oh, oh ah, ah. I just hit the back of my throat. I'm not sure I could drink that stuff straight because it is 100 proof. I think you'd be best mixing that with something. I'm not sure what, but you'd be best mixing it with something. Like I said, uh, Bailey's, Kalila, or something sweet, something where peppermint would give it a nice accent. But anyway, I'm going to hold off on this one for now because we're at the eight minute mark on the air fryer. So let's see how it looks like halfway through. Actually, you know what? First things first, pot holder so I don't set my table on fire. There we go. Oh, look at that. Let's turn it in there. Dramatic pan down. Oh, let's see here. Oh, wow, that's a little bit crispy on the outside. You know what? Let me take my thermometer. Check the temperature inside these things. Inside this one, it's... 88, 80, so oh, it's, he still has a way to go, I think. Let's put this, try this one. 106, 102, 100, it's going down. These are not fully cooked, so I think it needs to go the remaining eight or seven minutes. But on the outside, these feel crispy, so I'm encouraged by that. And hey, look at that. It's right back to its old setting, 370 in seven minutes. So let's go back to the thing there. And I saw Chris's comment about, oh, want the mouthfeel flavor and all that stuff. I don't do that anymore. At least not with liquor, so. Make like frozen and let it go. Anywho, the last one I got do is one of their oh wait if I can get back on center camera this stuff is their apple pie moonshine which is obviously a staple in the moonshine world this one is slightly different than normal moonshine normal moonshine you get is the um the apple flavor and it's got cinnamon and such in it I think among other things like nutmeg and such I think this one is different they got the in addition to the apple flavor they've also got caramel in this to me, that just makes it really, really good. And to a lot of people as well, so. Uh, I can open this. There we go. Ah, there we go. Oh, that smells fantastic and divine. My moonshine spigot on it. Michelle says, someone needs to tell me why you would want to drink liquid Red Hots. My son loves Fireball. Mm. It's, it's a sweet kind of, it's, it's a 2018 thing, I guess. That's my first reaction. But anyway, Apple Pie Moonshine, and I'm going to go full shot of this. This is, I like it. flavor and you get the full caramel in there. Tasty, tasty. That's the stuff. Anyway. So now we got five minutes left on the air fryer. And I'm wondering if I set the temperature maybe a little bit too low. I mean, they were freezing for a while and I gotta get these obviously to an internal tempo maybe. 150, 160, 170. So what? Yep, I'm just gonna let it go for the rest of the five minutes, take, check the temperature, and if it's still a little bit cold, I'll cook it for a little bit longer. In the meantime, we'll put this moonshine away. Or fake moonshine, whatever. That's frosty and foggy at that from my freezer.
And one more thing to show you before I oh, bring the water off first and finish that. Something that grew in my garden. I can't remember if I show this on my Rhino World channel, but look at this. And if this scares you, it should. This is a Carolina Reaper pepper. I've been growing these in my backyard this year and had success with the plants in the backyard. These things are scary. I actually made a batch of salsa with these in the fridge right now. It's, that was a couple weeks ago. I can only do small bits of it. That, it it's that hot. This thing is scary. And I got a whole bag of them here. And Nicholas's reaction to that? Yes. Wow, indeed. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with all these. Probably freeze and or dehydrate them, make them into powder. Although someone suggested making a hot sauce out of this. I've never tried fermenting peppers before. That's what you're supposed to do with hot sauces. I think if I do that, I would go to the store and get a bunch of jalapenos. Yeah, I know you don't want to ferment the green stuff, but that's all I can do. Maybe a bunch of jalapenos, maybe one of these in there as well. Or, or, or maybe easier would be to make, uh, what is it, one of the Carolina barbecue sauces, the vinegar stuff. But anyway. And also in this garden salsa pepper. Been meaning to make a salsa with this, but haven't gotten around to it. In fact, these things are starting to ripen a little too much, so I'm putting them in the freezer. But anyway, those peppers put hair on the chest. No, they don't put they don't put hair in the chest. They put calluses on the tongue. Bob says powder the wings. I don't have the powder of the Reaper stuff yet, of the fresh ones. But let's, wait a minute, two minutes left, and I hear something. I, I think that's just the outside of the wing just bubbling and crisping up, so that's cool. Oh, I didn't, know. didn't want to do that. But yeah, it's still blowing out hot air. I'm wondering what the right way to orient this would be, because hot air coming up on this wooden thing, the drywall back there, that might not be a good idea. Christopher Herbst, you won't eat one right now? Hell no! I'm dumb, but I ain't that dumb. Okay. How about when you come by next year, you eat one with me? to go one minute to go where's my thermometer here it is let's wait till this is done <laughs> waiting 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 zero minutes it's just wrapping it up I wish this thing had a second counter on it but oh well Again, if it's not fully cooked by this time, I will... Oh, oh, there we go. Let's have a look-see. Oh, it's... Maybe not burninated on the outside, but that looks... They look pretty cool, and oh, they definitely feel crispy on the outside. Oh, that's nice. All right, let's check the temperature. It's 122 with 57. Oh, yeah, these are hot. Oh, these are way hot. So 190. Oh, oh my God, these are... I am going to have to let these cool for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These definitely need to cool for a bit. So let's turn that off. 
use some of the beat up seasoning on the popcorn chicken. That's exactly what I'm going to do, but not immediately. I am going to have them as is first because I've never really had this style or this brand of popcorn chicken this kind this crispy before. I've only cooked them in a the microwave, maybe once or twice in the uh, my toaster oven, and it's bites too small. <clears throat> Cheapo plastic one. Let's see, but oh man, these feel really, really crispy on the outside, so I'm looking forward to unplug that, shove that. You know, I'm not gonna shove that in there yet. I'm gonna clean this up when I'm offline. Actually, it Heck with it, I'm going to wash that out while these dry up. Get up and orient that correctly. This is dried. So I clean my kitchen at the same time. I use clean loosely. Air fryer Amazon purchase looks tasty. Nicholas serves. Yeah, so these are prepared in a way that's healthier. Again, yes, this is an air fryer. Basically, an over glorified, uh, what's it called? A, I said I wanted a, a convection oven. There's the pan there, as you saw the pan there, and right underneath it is a heating element, and right above the element is a little fan to circulate the air around. Let's see, is this still hot? Oh, wow. Warm, but it's not mine really hot. This part clean up by the part this pan here. I think this part cleaning it's gonna be the most painful part, but even here right now it's not that bad. pretty cool pretty quickly though it's still warm but it's not hot in fact I can even handle the metal part so clean up is not difficult at all so anyway let's see if these are at a reasonable temperature now where I won't set my mouth literally on fire and go to the hospital Yep, they feel, yeah, they look more reasonable to me. 170. Yep, 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 yep. All right. So, here we go. Let's try one. Actually, they still feel a little bit hot. But you know what? It's all, I'll take a small piece. Risk it. Oh. Very satisfying crunch. Mm. You never get that in the microwave. I dare say you never get that. Oh, you're hot. It's 
I would have trouble getting this popcorn chicken this crispy in the uh, convection oven too. Oh man. I found a new way to cook these things. This is glorious. These all day. How does it taste compared to being fried in oil? Well, these I've never fried in oil before, so, but, and again, these are frozen, so I don't know, but to me, the real test for this would be to get some chicken wings, which I've done before, coat them in some flour, let it sit in the fridge for a little bit, and cook them in that. I've actually cooked those kinds of wings in hot oil before, in deep fried oil. To me, that would be the real test. If it tastes like I would deep fry them, I would say this is definitely a success. But that's an, that's an experiment I might try later today, off camera. Anything else? Enjoy your new toy. Looking forward to seeing what you try next from Michelle. Yeah. Nick Herbs, what sauce would go best with them? Any sauce. Whatever sauce you like. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You just gave me an idea. I don't have proper wing sauce, but I do have a bunch of... Let's see, do I have enough of this left? I do have Frank's Red Hot Wing Sauce here, just a little bit of it. Hey, heck, as long as I'm on camera, let's give it a shot. Get the bowl. Tiny little bowl here. Let's see how many just... Eh. Let's see, these four. They're just four. Frank's wing sauce. Oh, that's way too much. Actually, there's a few more in there. It still has that crunchy feel to it. Just the you can see it crumpling and just not crumpling, but just it's still solid in there. In the Frank sauce. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yep. It works. It works really well. We got ourselves a winner. This air fryer is a good thing. I think I can have a lot of fun with that. Might maybe get back into making videos. <laughs> Famous last words. But anyway, that's really all I got. I just wanted to unbox the air fryer. And y'all talked me into making some of this stuff here. And I don't regret it. It's really, really good. But anyway, any last comments before I... Call it a day. <laughs> Just don't cook a steak in there. That would be an injustice to steak. Well, maybe not a whole steak, but maybe like straight out. Don't give me ideas. Hot fudge. Well, there is a cake setting on that there, so I don't know. I could attempt to maybe make, make a small, tiny cake if I had a tiny little cake pan. But, that's another experiment for another day. So anyway, that will do it for this episode of Brian's World Live, unboxing my new air fryer. Thanks for watching. You can subscribe. To, you are, but if you're watching this, you're probably already subscribed to me, so I'm not even going to bother you with that spiel. So, thanks for watching. Have a great, great day. No, I can't shut the stream off from this app, so I'm going to do it on the camera. So, bye-bye.